As you likely know, Shad Gaspard tragically passed away recently. The wrestling community has been coming together in the wake of his death, so let's celebrate Shad's career by looking back at his first and last matches in WWE. Shad grew up in Brooklyn, New York, and at 5 years old, his father began teaching him how to box. Since he started training at such a young age, Shad began competing in tournaments while he was still a teenager. Because of his large size, the future Crime Time member fought against adults that were sometimes 20 years older than him. With that kind of background, it was a natural transition for Shad to become a bodyguard once he was an adult. His career took a much different path in 2002 when he tried out for Tough Enough. Out of thousands that entered, Shad made it to the finals, but unfortunately was disqualified after failing a physical. It wasn't all bad, however. He was recruited by WWE talent scout Tom Pritchard and began training in WWE's development promotion, OBW. After spending a couple of years there, Shad finally got signed by WWE in 2005, and it wouldn't be long before the 6'6 wrestler made his debut on the main roster. In 2006, Gaspar joined forces with the Neighborhoodie, who would later be known as JTG. They clicked, and in September of the same year, promos began hyping their debut on the main roster. Then, finally, on October 16, 2006, after over four years of work, Shad Gaspard would have his first match in WWE. After issuing a non-title open challenge, the World Tag Team Champions, the Spirit Squad, entered the ring. As you can probably guess, it was Shad and his partner JTG that answered the call. Once things settled down, Johnny and Mikey became the legal participants for the Spirit Squad, while JTG kicked off the match for crime time. After wearing down Johnny, JTG tagged in Gaspard, who mowed down the green pad wrestler with a massive shoulder. JTG immediately tagged back in, but thanks to some fast thinking, the Spirit Squad began taking over. Johnny and Mikey started laying into the shorter member of Crime Time, but JTG held on. When an opening presented itself, JTG took it and quickly tagged in a fresh Shad Gaspard. The favor of the match quickly changed, as Shad began sending both Spirit Squad members flying around the ring. Despite the beating, Johnny and Mikey still had fight left in them, but so did Shad. With things going south, Nikki attempted to interfere in the match, but JTG wasn't going to have any of it. While the referee was distracted, Johnny tagged in, but since the ref didn't see it, he wasn't allowed to enter. In the meantime, JTG slipped inside the ring and hit the G9 with Gaspard. One three count later, and Shad, along with JTG, were victorious. Not a bad debut match, and thanks to the promos that had been airing before, Crime Time received a pretty solid pop when their music hit. The team looked good, and Shad was especially presented as a dominant competitor, only taking one offensive move. I love that they stole the win, which was a great parallel to their characters. So after having a hot debut match, let's see what happened next in Gaspard's career. Crime Time and Spirit Squad faced off again the next week, with Shad and JTG gaining a second win. Despite beating the tag team champions twice, Shad's team never received a title match. However, at New Year's Revolution, Crime Time participated in and won a tag team turmoil match, which earned them a shot at the belts. Sadly, Crime Time never received their match. While they may not have been able to shine in the rain as much, Shad and JTG did get plenty of time to show off their personalities. They became two of the most entertaining wrestlers in WWE at the time and even came up with their own catchphrase. Cause yo, we like to make that money, money, yeah, that money, money. In September of 2007, both Shad and JTG would be released from WWE, but they weren't gone for long. Crime Time returned six months later and received a massive push. They formed a faction with John Cena, aiding him during his feud with JBL. Gaspar and JTG also began feuding with the World Tag Team Champions, Ted DiBiase and Cody Rhodes. While they would receive a championship match, Crime Time was unsuccessful in their attempt. The duo then moved on to a feud with John Morrison and The Miz. In addition to competing in the ring, the teams also competed for the best online show, The Dirt Sheet, or Shad and JTG's Word Up. To give you an idea of how popular this rivalry became, at Cyber Sunday, fans voted to see Crime Time vs. Morrison and Miz over a World Tag Team Championship match. While Shad and JTG would score a few wins over the Dirt Sheet duo, Crime Time ended the feud in defeat when they lost to Joe Mo and the A-Lister in early 2009. Later in the year, Shad, as well as JTG, got drafted to SmackDown, where Eve Torres would join the two. Their first feud on the Blue Show was with the Hart Dynasty. While the teams traded wins and losses, Shad's side ultimately won when they beat D.H. Smith and Tyson Kidd to become number one contenders for the tag team titles. Crime Time received their championship match at SummerSlam, but despite an impressive showing, it wasn't their night. Unfortunately, this is also the beginning of the end for Crime Time. 
Gaspard and JTG were both supposed to compete at bragging rights as part of Team Smackdown, but due to health concerns involving Chad, they were replaced. For the rest of the year, and into 2010, the duo didn't do a whole lot, besides participating in some number one contenders matches that they lost. With the team becoming stale, it was time for a change. On the SmackDown after WrestleMania 26, Primetime faced off against John Morrison in R-Truth. The match lasted a total of 44 seconds, with the latter team getting the win. After the pinfall, JTG checked in on his partner. Shockingly, Shad assaulted the man he had tagged with for over three years. Gaspar later explained his actions, claiming that JTG was standing in his way, and it was his time now. With his crime time days behind him, Shad began sporting a new look and entrance music. After weeks of unsanctioned brawls, Gaspard officially came face to face with his former friend at Extreme Rules. While Shad wasn't the victor that night, he redeemed himself a few weeks later when he beat JTG on an episode of Superstars. Unfortunately, Shad's run as a singles competitor was never fully realized, as his final match in WWE arrived on May 14th, 2010. In his home state of New York, Shad walked down the entrance ramp one last time. His opponent was a local competitor named Jesse Guyver, who you may know better as the Blade in AEW. Gaspard started the match by using his size to intimidate his opponent. Shad's plan didn't quite work out as Guyver's fight response was activated, but Gaspard shut down pretty quickly. The former Crime Time member continued to viciously attack his adversary by taking him down to the mat and eventually strangling him in the ropes. Jesse Guyver attempted to make a comeback, but Shad countered and hit the STO for the win. Adding insult to injury, Gaspard got in Guyver's face even after the bell had run. Shad's final WWE match unfortunately doesn't have a whole lot to it. It was a squash match, made to make him look good, and it did the job. Shad didn't get released from WWE until November of 2010, so I don't think anybody knew that this is going to be how he left the company. With that said, I kind of wish his match with JTG would have been his last, since that would be a good way of tying his WWE career together. However, it was nice they got to leave after a match that highlighted his strengths and also had his hand raised at the end of it. Now let's see where Shad's career took him after this. For one reason or another, Gaspar went to WWE's development system at the time, FCW. He spent a few months there until being released from his contract in late 2010. After WWE, Shad continued to wrestle on the independent circuit while also developing his film career. He appeared in a number of movies and TV shows, both on camera and as a stuntman. He even provided motion capture for a couple of video games and worked on a graphic novel. Besides playing and creating heroes, Shad was also a hero in real life. In 2016, while at a gas station, Shad stopped an armed robber and subdued him until police arrived. This makes his passing all the more sad. On May 17, 2020, Gaspard was swimming with his 10-year-old son in Venice Beach, California. They got caught in a strong rip current and Shad was taken under. A search by the Coast Guard yielded no results and after missing for a few days, Gaspard's body washed ashore. Something that really speaks to Shad's character is that when lifeguards came to rescue Shad and his son, he instructed them to save his child first. There's a lot of stories of terrible people in wrestling, and while I've never met Shad Gaspard, he seems like one of the good guys. My thoughts go out to Shad's family, his friends, and everyone affected by this tragic event. If you want, there are a few ways to help. Both Pro Wrestling Tees and Collar and Elbow have shirts available, with 100% of the proceeds going to Gaspard's family. Additionally, a GoFundMe has also been set up, links to all of which are in the description. Also, feel free to share any memories or your favorite moments from Shad's career in the comments. With that, I'm Zach from Tap Out Corner, and that was Bell to Bell.